Hey dear, it's Tanya. Welcome to my channel. What is impossible in business? And what is impossible in life? In my opinion, nothing is impossible. And I have a perfect story for you to demonstrate why I believe that nothing is impossible. Even more, at the end of this video, I will share my secret recipe, if you want, what, uh, how you can make the impossible possible for you as well, whether that is your personal goal or uh, your professional goal. All right, let's go right into it. Yesterday marked exactly two years since uh, we started our breastfeeding journey. Sia, my daughter, and I. And Sia, she is more than two years. She turned two years to uh, three months ago, three and a half months ago, but yesterday was the first, yesterday, two days ago, was the first day that she was put on my boob. And so many people have already told us in the past two years that it's such a miracle that she's able to breastfeed. So reaching two years, of course, it's a huge thing for all of us. So uh, yeah, we are very proud and this is my uh, story that will show you why everything and anything is, is possible. There are two reasons on her side and two reasons on my side why breastfeeding was a thing that we could only you know hope for and many said it was probably never going to happen let's start with her two reasons for her first reason is that she was born at 25 weeks some of you already know that 25 weeks is less than third trimester is three and a half months prematurely she was born with 915 grams which is about two pounds just a little tiny little pumpkin yes and she, that's the first reason. Uh, obviously that small, her whole organism and system wasn't able to, to manage suckling and so she, wasn't, she was fed um, through different uh, options. And then the second reason is that she was also diagnosed with BPD, which is bronchopulmonary disorder, basically um, breathing issues. Uh, due to the tracheomalacia, which is a floppy track. I will not bore you with all the medical terms. Basically, it means that she had difficulties with breathing and also breathing and swallowing is a challenge above that. So it's extremely challenging for a baby who's born preemie to manage both, especially at the same time. That was on her side and she was intubated for 10 weeks straight and then on other breathing um, devices for another five weeks. On my side, I was hospitalized for three months after giving birth to her, a full three months of hospitalization, postpartum. Uh, I had several um, complications from uh, bleeding stomach ulcer that uh, medication gave me to um, to uterine rupture, uh, to, to ascites, um, and, and so on. And that basically came with huge mm, time constraints, which is weird, you might say. You were just at the hospital. I had people coming in you know, from nurses to doctors to um, all the experts trying to figure out what was happening with me. So it was challenging for me to pump. Uh, usually when a mother has a baby in the NICU, she needs to pump because the baby isn't able to breastfeed, right? And at the beginning, the newborn baby uh, eats about eight to 12 times per day. So I should have been pumping eight to 12 times per day. That was no way I had this opportunity or I had the time to do so. Every pumping session is about 20 to 30 minutes at least. So, and we were back and forth between NICU and me being hospitalized, uh, the other side of the hospital and so on. Time constraint was the first big one because when you're breast pumping already, you're not making the same amount, the same milk production. And then um, also it was just like very lengthy. I pumped for 15 weeks exclusively. The second biggest challenge, and that was really the biggest challenge in the journey was that I had an open heart surgery three months um, post uh, uh, postpartum, three months after she was born, I consulted all the uh, lactation consultants in the NICU in our hospital, 
uh, three or four, and they were all very, very skeptical whether I was actually be uh, gonna be able to keep the milk production and one day feed a baby because of her challenges and because of my uh, upcoming open heart surgery. I also spoke to my doctors, including my surgeon, who was very pessimistic about my milk production continuing um, after the surgery. After the surgery, my production dropped from 650 ml to 120 ml per day. And, and then I was able to bring it back up. So this is not a breast pumping um, tips video. If you would like to know what exactly I did to keep my production or to bring my production back up, let me know in the comments. I'll share this with you. It was nothing conventional. It was no medication, nothing like that. I really um, did it. Uh, my way. Now, I told you, right? I'm still breastfeeding her. So how the heck did we make it? How the heck did we make it two years after? Not only the first time, but the two years after. Okay, I kept doing what was in my power and I kept this vision strong, vividly in my mind. I was visualizing how it's going to be. I poured all my love into that. And I knew that impossible only means I am possible. It is possible. It can only mean it's possible, but you gotta believe in it. No matter what other people say. They said to me, yes, we have had, ex we have had cases where um, the baby would be in the NICU and undergo an open heart surgery, but not baby in the NICU and mom undergoing a heart surgery that we have never had and we don't know how it will be in the following weeks or months. We don't know what's going to happen with your breast milk, they said, the lactation consultant said. And I said, I don't care. I believe and that's all I need. I believe. And I was fighting with doctors who repeatedly wanted me to stop breastfeeding. It was too difficult on my body. I was on uh, extreme uh, fluid restriction. And I'm like, I don't care. This is, I know, this is what I want. This is what I want so badly. And so on exactly her due date, which was um, yesterday, they told me that I was able to um, put her on the boob and she latched perfectly like she never did, like she had never done anything but breastfeeding two years so far and counting. And so let's see what the future brings. But this isn't a video on breastfeeding as much as it looks like. This is a video on connecting to your vision, connecting to your desire, not hearing and listening to everybody, especially all the experts that say, it's not possible, you can't make it, you can't do it, it will never happen. And you know it will happen no matter what. I will pour my heart and soul into it and I will make it happen, okay? So share in the comments what your impossible um, challenge is, what, what other people are saying, it's impossible, you can't make it. Or maybe even in the inner voice, right? Your inner voice maybe is saying, you can't do this, it's impossible, no, 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 no. Just let it be, say thank you and no thank you. I choose not to listen to you. Thank you for watching, it's um, kind of like the, in honor of our breastfeeding journey, in honor of our second anniversary of breastfeeding. And I'm, if you watch it this far, thank you very much because you shared this uh, joy with us. I can't wait to um, show you next week what's, uh, what baby Sia has taught me about my business. What, baby? Yeah, you'll see. See you then. Thanks for watching. I think it would be pretty cool if you subscribe. Also, my daughter Sia gets a tickle every time someone likes a video. So if you love babies, well, you know what to do.